Well, welcome to another edition of Local Government Today, and today's edition is the Mayor's Minute. Nice to see you again, Cheryl Verkamen, the mayor of uh, the city of Marine City. Glad to be back. Uh, you guys are on the front page, but that's not a good place to be with this mm. uh, all this white stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's been a struggle. Uh, we've got lots of places along uh, the Marine City there, from the beach straight down to Catholic Point that are struggling. Yeah. And... Uh, Let's touch on it for a second or two. Well, unfortunately, the water went up very, very quickly this year um, and early. Yeah. You know, I mean, normally we don't, th th we're not even in spring breakup. I right. mean, this is just, you know, something just uh, like, like, like Huron just, you know, let loose and came down and, and, and then it just jammed up in Algonac and then everything just went to pot. So, um, you know, the icebreakers have been going around like crazy and uh, got the ferry back open again to Harsons Island. That was shut down for, I don't know, four or five days. And, and uh, so right now, that's all, the, that's all you see on the river is just the, the cutters, you know, going back and forth. Thank God. Thank goodness, yes. But, and, and the water has gone down. It's receded. Um, but, you know, you know what spring is going to bring. It's going to unfortunately gonna happen back. probably again. Yeah. And, uh uh, up in East China and Point Drive, they oh. got, really got hit bad, bad yeah. up there. So. Yeah. So all we can say is, you know, thank goodness it's uh, it's receded, but you know, be prepared for it to happen again. You know. Talk to me about what's uh, up to date in uh, Marine City. What's news? Well, we had we, we, last weekend we had a really cool festival. It was called the um, the Fire and Ice Festival, and we did that at uh, 300 Broadway, which is you know the old city hall. It's right. that beautiful corner on Broadway and yeah. Main. Yeah, with an ice and rink there. The ice rink is there, and the ice rink is lit. We, you know, uh, which is beautiful. People have been using it like crazy. So we had the Fire and Ice Festival last weekend, and um, a kind of a taste of Marine City. So some local restaurants. Um, stood out in the cold for two hours and <laughs> served food, <laughs> myself included. Um, and then we, there was all kinds of different little activities. We had skate performers. There was um, uh, somebody that juggled with fire. We had music. I mean, it was, it was really kind of a cool event. Um, thank goodness it was sunny. Yeah. A little bit breezy, you know. It was it a was, beautiful it weekend. It was cold. Though. But it was, you know, that's you, it's Michigan, right? You got to get you right. bundle up and come outside, you know. And, and people love it. They, mm -hmm. they do. They, they love yeah. to bundle up and they love to get outside. And, and especially when the sun is shining like it was that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. It puts a smile on people's face. Yeah. So that was kind of a joint effort between the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Board. And uh, we just had a meeting um, to discuss, you know, uh, how the event went. And I think that next year there's talk about doing um, a combined, because uh, we did a chili cook off and then we did the Fire mm -hmm. and Ice Festival, right. combining the two, yep. you know, and having uh, a, a bigger event you know, with uh, the chili cook-off and then the performers and skaters and all that kind of stuff. Again, keeping it outside. And, and it's a great location to do it at, at the old city hall because we use part of the building as like a wind block. You yeah, know, we yeah. put the tents up and, yeah. you know, Good it, idea. So it worked out really, really well. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of people attended. It was, it, was a great, it was a great event. You mentioned something there in that, in that uh, report about an economic development committee. Is mm -hmm. that different than the group we are familiar with called the EDA? Well, it's it's a marine. The uh, the economic development committee is is Marine City. Okay. It's a Marine City Bay. It's not county. It's it's just for okay. us in Marine City. And um, what we try to do is, you know, um, just develop us. You know, develop all different kinds of businesses in Marine City. Yeah. You know, and help people find a business or a location. You know. Um, there's all kinds of people making inquiries on, Good. you know, different, uh, you know, how do I bring my business in? And what do you think about if I, if I brought in, you know, baked goods? Or what do you think if I brought in a clothing store? Or what? And, you know, and we give them our opinion and, and we help them find space. Good. So, Good. yeah, it, there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, but, but, that's, that, that's the, but that helps. Gives the people an idea that yep. if they're thinking about something, maybe they should contact you guys. Yes. Yeah, you can contact the uh, Economic Development Committee through the city offices. The city offices. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Go ahead yep. with what you're... you got some other many imp important things to tell us here today. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk today about scams. You know, um, I am so tired of hearing my friends and their parents and, you know, family members that say, oh my goodness, you know, I, I, I got so close to 
you know, saying something that I shouldn't have said on the phone or I think I got scammed or, you know, and so, you know, I, I just thought I would touch base upon that because a, a dear friend of mine um, just lost his dad and within a week, within a week, his mother was getting phone calls. And you know what they do? They look in the obituaries, yeah. right? They yeah, see right, right. if somebody has passed. That's correct. And within a week, I mean, and this guy, thank goodness my friend was at the house, but he sounded so legit. She put him on speakerphone. She answered the phone, put him on speaker. And from a life insurance company, you know, this policy that he had and blah, 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 blah. And, wow. you know, and he was looking to get um, financial information, bank information. He asked for her social security number and right away my friends in the distance he hears that and he's like mom you know like yeah. don't you know you don't do that you know right. you don't ever give your social security number right. over the phone and um so you know hearing about that i'm like you know what we're going to talk about this you know because scammers you know there's a couple people in the world that i don't like i don't like bullies you know <laughs> and scammers are bullies so they're very very manipulative and they prey upon the weak Correct. You know, they prey upon the vulnerable and the weak, you know. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. So there's a couple different kinds of scams. Um, and there's uh, things to, to look out for. First off, scammers pretend to be from an organization you know, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, they could say the big guys, right? Social Security Administration, we're yeah. from the IRS, Medicare, especially now because there's open enrollment happening, you know? Uh, healthcare scams are very prevalent right now. You know, a utility company, um, a tech company, it could even be a charity, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So right away, you know, we automatically, because we're a very, we're very trusting people, you know, we like to trust people and somebody calls us on the phone and says they're from Social Security Administration and they're very nice and pleasant, but all of a sudden, you know, they need to have information, you know? And that should be the red the flag. flag. The red yep, flag. That red in flag the should come up the minute because no bank, no financial institution, no utility company, no federal agency, nobody will ask you for critical and pertinent information over the phone. Right. You know, and the best thing, the best advice that I can give is just to hang, hang up. up. Just to hang up. Don't engage. The minute you hear that, that request for information that's your red flag hang up i normally tell them either i've just went bankrupt about an hour ago <laughs> or or i wish them uh, good luck in their future and then yeah. i hang up <laughs> uh, but unfortunately there are people that you know they don't want to hang up on because we're nice people you know um, another another uh, thing to look out for is when they always tell you that there could be a problem or a prize you know, oh, yeah, I right. personally had a phone call from um, Detroit Edison, right? This is DTE calling. They called me on a Friday afternoon, right? Well, I'm getting ready for dinner service. We're getting right. busy, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, we don't have, we don't have your bill paid. Yeah. I'm like, I always pay my bills. Well, we don't have it recorded and we need you to blah, 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 blah. And this guy that called me, he had me going. Yeah. Me of all people. Right. My right. degree's in criminal justice. It's right. like, wait a second. Right. He had me going. I actually was thinking, did I pay that bill? <laughs> I know I paid that bill. You know? And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're gonna shut off my electricity on a Friday night. That's right. You know? And then he said, You need to go to the nearest ATM uh -uh, no. to pay no. your bill. And no. I'm like, oh, click, click. You know. But I gave him a couple minutes of my time. It you know, it, it's, it's scary it, stuff. Yes, they can talk yes, you into something. Yes, and that's that's another thing to look out for too is the pressure. You know, they if they got you on the phone and they keep you on the phone, that's when the pressure starts. You know, and you've heard of the scam where um, someone calls and says, you know, I'm a, I'm a police officer and we just arrested your grandson, granddaughter, right. niece, right. nephew. Somebody. You know, and the thing about those kind of scams is they have information mm -hmm. because they get it through Facebook, they get it through social media, where they'll find a kid and see the grandparents. If the grandparents are friends of theirs, then that's their target, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so they have all kinds of information about 
the, the grandson, granddaughter, niece, nephew. And, you know, next thing you know, well, we want to, you know, we don't want to send them to court. We'd like to release them. Do you, you don't want them to spend the night in jail, do you? Right, right. Oh, no, Johnny, you know. And so, you know, next thing you know, you're giving $5,000 to some fictitious whatever, right. you know, and you've been scammed. That's right. So that's the, that's the pressure. Um, the last thing is they want you to pay in a certain way. That's how you also know that it's a scam is no, fi no you know, Social Security Administration, utility company, all that stuff. They will never tell you to go somewhere else to make the payment. You know, if you really wanted to make your payment to DTE, you go to the DTE website. Right. You know, right. you pay at DTE, you pay at a, a call center or something. Right. You know, you n you're never going to go to uh, uh, an ATM to make a payment. So. That's, that should be another telltale sign. So um, a, a friend of mine, um, her mom is getting a little forgetful. She still lives alone. And they did two things to prevent uh, their mom from answering the phone and, and being a victim of, of a scam. They did two things. They, number one, got her an answering machine. The okay. old the old fashioned answering machine. Yep, they were. So she can filter her phone calls. Yep. And then they put a note by the answering machine. Mm -hmm. Only answer if it's, and then, you know, friends, family, someone you recognize. Yep, yep. That's it. Just don't answer the phone. Right. Just do not answer the phone. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. And then the second thing that they put by the answering machine is never give out bank information, social security information. You know, they literally put that by the answering machine. So when the phone rings, the mom goes, looks, you know, hears who it is, sees number one not to give up because she, they've caught her answering the phone right. and coming extremely close again to giving out pertinent information. You know, should they contact the local police? We're going to show. I got a, a little video that you uh, suggested uh, from the Federal Trade Commission on how to report these kinds of scams. Uh, what are what are other local? Well, I think that if, if somebody's going door to door, and that oh, is also yeah. a scam, right? Yeah. A, a, the construction scam, where right. you know they walk no legitimate good construction company, and I know a lot of guys in construction. They're very busy. They are not going to go door to door, right. you know, um, to sell you a roof or a driveway or something like that. If it's that kind of a scam because they're in your neighborhood, right. I would recommend calling local PD. Okay, you know because put put an officer on it right you know um, otherwise really scamming is a, is a federal offense it's a, it's okay. through the Federal Trade Commission okay. and we do have a short video yeah yep all right well let's run that short video and then we'll come back and catch up on the rest of the th exciting things that are happening in Marine City this is you you've been ripped off or you've spotted a scam don't keep it to yourself. Take it to the Federal Trade Commission by filing a complaint. What kind of complaint? The Federal Trade Commission is the nation's consumer protection agency. So if a business doesn't deliver on its promises, or if someone cheats you out of your money, the Federal Trade Commission wants to hear about it. I bought a phone card with 350 minutes of calling time, but it cut me off after 20. I'm getting bills for things I didn't buy. I think someone stole my identity. Letter said I won a sweepstakes, but I had to wire money to cover the taxes. I did, and never heard from them again. I responded to an ad online for a free trial offer, but then I started seeing charges for it every month. I thought the email was from someone who saw my resume and wanted to hire me, but they asked for my bank account number. I reported it to the Federal Trade Commission. Telling the Federal Trade Commission helps us stop rip-offs, scams, and fraudsters. Your complaints matter here. To file a complaint, just go to ftc.gov slash complaint and answer the questions. Or call 1-877-FTC-HELP. That's all there is to it. If you've been ripped off or scammed, complain to the Federal Trade Commission. It can help put the bad guys out of business. Four, three. Well, that was a good video. Um, <laughs> It gives the basic information, and uh, as we said, if you see something local, make sure you just call the local police department or the sheriff's department, and they'll, they'll get involved. But uh, what's next? Well, um, I thought we would um, talk a little bit about um, the MCMC, which is the Marine City Marina Coalition. 
All right. I That's know. something new. I know. I love the name. Yeah. MCMC. MCMC. MC. <laughs> So we uh, a group, MC squared or MC whatever. MC squared. Yep, <laughs> yep. So we are a, a group of all different people. People that are you know that have a vested interest in um, a property on the Bell River. We're trying to develop the Bell River. You okay. know, um, I always say this that Marine City missed the boat. Ha ha ha. On <laughs> getting a marina a long time ago. You know. Yeah, it's been talked about over the years. A mm -hmm. little bit here, and then it goes away, and a little bit here, and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. So. It's such a valuable asset. It's such for the a community. valuable asset for yeah for for many many reasons. Um, a long time ago, I'm not sure of the you know year or whatever. Um, there was a plan to actually come down the Bell River, cut into some property. Oh, you know, block off a, the the street that's there, which I think is South Bell River. Don't get me. I don't know if it's, that's we accurate. Um, and then actually do like a really big marina. Oh, you know, um, okay. and that I I don't know I don't know the history behind that decision, um, but that was uh, it 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 didn't it didn't come to fruition. You know, it was a big project, right? And it was a big costly project, right? You know, um, and so now you know there are too many private people that own all the land that's there, um, and so now um, we're just trying to get the the city only owns a small portion of you know docking area like i'm talking a small portion like you know not even like a hundred feet if that oh um okay. you know and we want people to come in we want people to to do transient docking where mm -hmm. they're coming in for the day mm -hmm. or a few hours mm -hmm. just dock your boat go have lunch right do a little bit of shopping and yeah. and go right. you know but wouldn't it be nice if you could you know spend the night right. and you know and enjoy the city a little bit more so we we formed the mcmc the marine city marina coalition and <laughs> And uh, we, we've been meeting um, almost weekly, you know. And yesterday, I'm happy to report that we literally got like almost, almost all the owners of all the private land that's along the Bell River on the west side, you know, from the gravel yards to the bridge. Wow. To wow. The the yeah, got everybody the together. Um, Jeff Bohm was involved. He's uh, from the county and he, um, he uh, brought in a guy uh, that um, was talking about um, different grant opportunity opportunities, and you know, he would, if this, he would know. If, yeah, he would know. And if you know, if if one of the landowners would want to sell their a piece or a portion or the whole thing, how we could go about financing that? There was all kinds of creative talk. Wow. So, and we That's actually went cool. and walked, you know, walked along the Bell River and and had some discussions. So. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm very pleased. I think it's. So uh, this is the the group that met was uh, met on the west. We we're talking about the west side of the Bell River. Right. From the Laboon Bridge back to the to the gravel. Yep. Wow, that's a big piece of property. That's a big piece of property. Yeah, yeah. And so some of it's city owned. Okay. Some of it's owned by um, the family that owns the um, storage. Right. They built uh, like a mini storage right. facility there. And then there's a little bit of a marina. There's like a gas dock that is not doesn't have any gas in it. And then um, you know uh, a, a man from um, Algonac and Fairhaven bought the rest. And um, yeah, so it's there's some there's some nice things happening. Good. And there's you know there are are the marinas in there operating? Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, and even so nothing even, is closed. Nothing is closed. Okay. No, but we're we're going to get gas docks this year. Oh, good. Yes, which is massive. Uh, a charter service is happening, um, and uh, uh, a bait shop, and yeah, there's going to be all kinds of activity on the Bell River. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be great. Didn't you get a grant for uh, the kayaks? kayak launch? Yep. That's happening on the north side of the river. Okay. Yep. Yep, on the north side. So that'll happen this year too. So there's a lot of you know a lot of cool things. Yep. Yeah. Very excited. What else we got? Well, um, next month, you know, I'd like to uh, um, invite for the March Mayor's Minute. I'd like to invite um, Megan Pierce here. She is our financial director. Okay. Uh, sharp. She's a sharp cookie, okay. as they say. Um, uh, and I just want to you know have a conversation with her about. Taxes, water bills, everybody always says, why are marine city taxes so high? Why are my yeah. water bills so high? 
Well, sometimes education is mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. you know, so. It's a good idea. Yeah, she's, idea. Uh, she's, um, she's the person to talk to. You know, and she's going to be, and I, I asked her, you know, if she would join me in March. And so what she's going to do is she's going to also research, you know, some of the area communities and see, you know, where where are we in all Good. this? You know, are we truly high or are we just saying that? Right. You know, are our water bills that high and our taxes that high? If she's got some charts or something or a PowerPoint kind of thing, we can take and put that up on the air and people can get a, a little better idea of what, uh, where they're at right. in comparison to the rest Great. of the yep. communities. Yep. I'll mention it to her. Yeah, it, perfect. Uh, uh, I'm glad you're doing this. Uh, I think it's important. The first show you did uh, got great, great numbers, as they say. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Her name is uh, Mayor Cheryl Verkhamen, <laughs> and she also uh, spends part of her time at a wonderful place called the uh, the Little Bar. So stop and say hi to her. Ask her about her wonderful city, the city of Marine City. Thank you. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. Thanks for uh, tuning in to Local Government Today.